In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome aspect ratio cutout effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you've got some footage imported, generally you want to import footage which is a little larger than the aspect ratio that you want to finish with. So as you can see, this is widescreen footage, but we're going to turn this into anamorphic looking footage. So in order to do that, we actually just need to load up our reference. So I'll just go layer new solid. We'll change the color of this to black. Press OK. And then we'll just go to the proportional grid. Then I'll load the rectangle tool. And then I'm just going to use the proportional grid to help me frame up this anamorphic cutout. So I'm just going to draw that rectangle and then go into masks and select inverted. So when we turn that off, you can see this is what we are left with. So we want this animation. So we want me to appear out of the anamorphic bar and then come back in. So at the moment, you can see it's not quite going to work. So we're just going to increase the scale. So I'll press S and pull that up. And then I'm just going to move the position up as well. And now you can see if I pull the opacity of the black solid two down, you can see all of this part of me is going to appear outside of the anamorphic bar. I can even take this a step further if I wanted to. So I can lock that top layer and then just move this up even further. So even more of me falls out of there. There you go. So essentially the only part of the video that we now need to focus on is any part of me that disappears out of the frame. So essentially it's this one arm and then it's also these two feet and the bottom of my legs as well. So in order to do that, we can either physically go in and mask it frame by frame, or we could actually go into the Roto brush. And that's the option that I'm going to go for. So I'm just going to scrub through to the point where I first make that transition into the bar. So that was here. I'll make a cut there. Then I'll scrub through to the point where I disappear out. So that is here. So I'm just going to go to the start of the second video. And I'm going to go into the Roto Brush icon, double click that layer, and now I'll click the Roto Brush again, and then I just want to paint within myself. Now, as you can see, this is going to take a little bit of work to make sure this is perfect. I'm going to zoom in, and you can see this has spilled out over onto the trees. So if I hold Option, that's going to turn that red and I can paint outside of myself to say this is what I do not want here. So I'm just going to hold option again and I'll just get rid of this section here. I'm going to get a little closer, a little closer on the other side as well. And I think we are almost there. This is definitely not perfect. It's going to need some work. But once you feel like you've got that to a point where you're fairly happy, we can just go ahead and press the space bar and that's just going to go frame by frame. And as you can see, instantly it's gone wrong. So I'm just going to go to that second keyframe. We'll delete this here and then we'll just add in this here. It's a little bit difficult because there's motion blur on this layer, which is really making it difficult. But if we just go frame by frame, you can just go through and clean this up. Now I'm just going to press the space bar again. And as you can see, again, I need to go back through and I just need to clean this up. So I'm really having a hard time with this blurry part of the frame. But you can see if I go back to our main composition, you can see if I extend that bottom video over and then I pull the opacity of this over up to 100% and then I drag that roto layer on top you can actually see that that video is now appearing on top of the bar. So you would just keep working through this entire process until you appear fully over that bar. Now, as you can see, this example is difficult because there's a lot of motion blur in the frame. As you can see, if I go back into that rotoed layer, so I go into the layer, you can see there's a lot of blurring here. So I wouldn't recommend doing this on any footage like this which has a normal shutter speed of around 1 over 50. That's if there's a lot of movement in the frame. This is quite a dynamic move, which means to capture this, I would need to be probably double or triple that. So 1 over 100 or maybe even quadruple 1 over 200 just to make that really nice and easy on the rotor. Just before we carry on with this video, I'm going to take a quick break to talk about my Skillshare courses. 
If you're enjoying these YouTube videos, but you would prefer more long form content, then my Skillshare courses are perfect for you. I have a two hour plus course all about Adobe After Effects, and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and to get familiar with the interface and how After Effects works. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, then please feel free to check the link in the description below. Now back to the video. But if I was to give you another example of this, so let's delete that layer and let's actually add in something else. There you go. Let's just add this basic talking head video into here. And as you can see, we're just going to rotate the top of my head so that the top of my head is appearing outside of the anamorphic bar. So again, to do that, we are just going to only focus on the first four seconds. So get rid of those last few seconds. And then I'm just going to make a copy of this. And on this top layer, we'll go to the Roto brush. Then from that, I'm just going to select the Roto brush again. And I'm just going to draw a mask around the top of myself. There we go. Make sure that is pretty perfect. Again, I've overspilled there. So I'm just going to hold option and I'm just going to get rid of the outside of that. And then I'm just going to go frame by frame. And I'm just going to let Adobe After Effects analyze this footage for me. So as you can see, if we go back to the main comp and we solo this, you can see just my head has now been isolated. Now, if your hair was a little bit frizzier or you had a few flyaway hairs, you could actually go back into this and you can go down to refine edge. And now you can just paint around here, but I would recommend getting a larger brush. So go into brushes and increase the diameter to around 50. And then you could just paint around the outside of your hairline and doing that will turn your hair white and the background black. And now you would just let Adobe After Effects do all the analyzing and just use the refine edge tool to just get a really soft, clean edge around the hairline. But once you've done that, you can see you've got this really clean solo layer up here. So from here, you would just have to put this on the very top. So you put the isolated layer on the top, the anamorphic bar or the aspect ratio in the middle. And then you add the original footage on the bottom and you should find you are left with something like this. Now, as you can see in my example, there were a few imperfections there. So my hair disappears on this frame. So if that was the case in yours, I'd recommend going back in and just cleaning that up with the Roto brush tool. But once you're happy with that, you can just carry on and you'll find you've got this really awesome effect now created inside of Adobe After Effects. Again, this doesn't have to be done for specifically anamorphic bars. You could actually just have some cool shapes. So we can just add a slant at the top and the bottom like this. And it looks like you're popping out of there as well. That looks really cool. And you could also rotate your hands out the bottom here as well. And you could add maybe a different colored background here. So if we go into effects and presets and search for tint, we can actually make this a cool color. So we can go for like a nice purple. You can see you've got this really cool effect now happening. But there you go. That is how you do this effect. Now, like I mentioned before, it's a lot easier to do this when you've got a good shutter speed and there's not a massive amount of movement. That first example, there was a really dynamic amount of movement within the frame and the shutter speed was low, which meant the motion blur made it very difficult. It's very possible to still get this effect, but that motion blur does make it a little bit more difficult and you may have to go frame by frame and do this yourself rather than letting Roto Brush work its magic. But there you go. That is how you do this really awesome cutout effect inside of Adobe After Effects. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.